today on Running to Him. God uses us to remind others of His promise. Today's reading is 2 Kings chapter 4, and we'll be concentrating on verses 19 through 21. 2 Kings 4, 19 through 21 says, He said to his father, My head, my head. And he said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her lap until noon, and then died. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, and shut the door behind him, and went out. Now I'd like to propose something today, and my proposition is a radical idea for Protestants. In the reading today, we have three miracles. First, the miracle of the oils shows God's control and provision through nature. The second shows God's power over childbirth. The third offers God's authority over life and death. Each of these miracles has something to do with God interacting with man through and with physical objects. Now, most Protestants chafe at the idea of physical items having a sacramental value. The word supper is probably the one that would pop into our minds. Ever since Swingley in the 16th century, most Protestants hold that the bread and the wine or grape juice have no value except that of a tool to remember a specific time in Christ and the disciples' lives. But in the early church, from its founding in Acts chapter 2 until the 1530s, it held that the elements were in some way the body and blood of Christ. This doctrine was held in the Eastern Church as well as in the Western Church. So when the Shunammite woman realized her son was dead, she did two things. She took her son to Elisha's room and went to Elisha. Now, why would she take her son to Elisha's room except through an understanding that Elisha had stayed there and that the room was built for one purpose— to house him when he came. She went to Elisha to tell him what happened, and interestingly, God had not revealed to Elisha what had happened. But Elisha took immediate action after her plea. He sent Gehazi ahead with his Elijah's staff, with the command to speak to no one on the way there. The staff may have served two purposes. First, it may have been a symbol known to others that it was Elijah's staff, and not to disturb that person. Secondly, it may have shown Gehazi that Elisha's power was not in a piece of wood, but instead through God's power within. Later we will see, in a later reading, that Gehazi was focused on material things. Now when Elisha arrived, he went upstairs and shut the door. He wanted privacy. He wanted only the boy and he around as he spoke with God. The miracle in itself is told in a very straightforward manner. Elisha laid on the boy. Now, many early church fathers indicate that they thought Elisha became as small as a boy not to crush him, and then merge his life with the boy's life. They all remarked that the boy sneezed seven times, reflecting God's perfect number. I think there's an overwhelming lesson to be learned through this story. We need to be reminded of God's presence. The Shunammite mother learned of God's leading all her life, and her, the husband learned of God's power through Elisha. What have we learned? Thank you for listening. We pray that today's devotion was meaningful to you. We would love to hear from you. You can use either Facebook or YouTube to like, subscribe, share, and tell others about us. If you would like to contact us, you can reach me at PhineasJacobus at runningtohim.net.